So my name is Stasia Denisova and I'm from Moscow, Russia. I'm working for Civic Assistance Committee and uh, we are here um, trying to help and defend the rights of asylum seekers, refugees and forced migrants. Well, the current situation as well as the situations, uh, well, five uh, years ago or ten years ago in Russia uh, is difficult because um, there are quite a number of people uh, uh, fleeing from their home countries, uh, for example, from Syria, from Afghanistan, from Ukraine now. And the Russian system of asylum is not very uh, welcoming, I would say. Um, though, um, well, UNHCR, United uh, a high Commissioner of the United Nations uh, um, has uh, almost withdrawn its activities from Russia because uh, there has been a decision that uh, now the Federal Migration Service of Russia has established the system of asylum, well, as of granting asylum to people to a um, normal level, though we as uh, uh, civil activists uh, do not fully agree to that. We think that this system is very raw and probably uh, the main uh, problem uh, here is the absence of political will to integrate those uh, people into Russian community. So uh, the, greatest, uh, the greatest problem is with basically getting into this system of getting an asylum. This problem is not directly connected with the legislation, by the way, because legislation is quite liberal, it's quite, uh, well, it's, uh, 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 it follows uh, our international uh, responsibilities and uh, uh, Convention on Human Rights uh, and the uh, European Convention on Human Rights and Freedoms, uh, but the, the uh, problem is not there. The problem is in practice and that people are not accepted into this very procedure because in order to get this asylum you have to apply and then you're interviewed and then there is a long process of decision making if you are um, and, and uh, if you are well deserving this asylum or uh, refugee status there are two two different statuses and uh, um, so people are uh, considered to be not um, well, not uh, asylum seekers from the very beginning. So they are said in the Federal Migration Service, no, you don't pass, you don't have to get into this procedure, you're just a labor migrant, so please refer there, there, and there. And so people are misled uh, from the very beginning. Uh, nobody really looks uh, into their difficult situation with many, many details and uh, really uh, a lot of hardships. Well, <laughs> no. Um, I should say that um, it, it depends a lot on political um, rhetorics. And, uh, um, for example, in 2012-2013, when there were a round of uh, different elections in Russia, this uh, anti-migrant rhetoric was so popular that it became obvious because we had more and more cases of hate crimes and uh, attacks on people of different uh, skin color and different origin or citizenship. And uh, uh, now the uh, this um, you know rhetoric switched to a bit of to Ukraine, and so uh, though it is also very militarized, it is kind of warmongering rhetorics here. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we see that it's a bit shift from uh, migrants. Well, the answer is quite clear because the labor market in Central Asia, which is the main source for migrants, uh, is, uh, um, well, it is uh, over, so it's abundant in, in labor force. And the Russian labor market, vice versa, is uh, in need of. Yeah, labor force. So um, uh, the people are coming because there is work here. You know, we we have uh, quite a big 
construction market, for example, in Moscow region, which is huge and which is uh, uh, very, so it will not be profitable unless they employ migrants. Uh, of course, uh, ask uh, for smaller salaries, it's everywhere like this. And uh, um, so they are in high need in this sphere, for example, in Moscow. So these, these uh, uh, reasons are quite, quite obvious, but uh, with a lot of changes and changes in this migration sphere aimed at more and more restrictions, uh, the, uh, these migration flows from Central Asia starting to uh, divert to other directions, to other countries. We have already started noticing it. By the way, this is not only the, uh, these are not only economic reasons uh, and uh, these bureaucratic reasons behind it, uh, behind this change. We also um, see that um, we have um, the, uh, such a novelty from 2013, there is an electronic database that makes a blacklist of people who have uh, violated the Russian law for, of, of uh, foreign citizens, who have violated Russian laws while being in Russia. And this can be, for example, two very minor uh, uh, like uh, violations. For example, you're crossing the street in the wrong place, or you're driving a car and uh, it is a speeding, for example, uh, uh, speeding ticket that you got. So these two are enough for you to uh, be expelled from the country and close the entry for the next three years. And this is happening automatically. And the Federal Migration Service says that, well, this is... Uh, uh, this database uh, uh, takes no bribes, so it is very anti-corruptive, and you are always complaining that migration is corruptive, so we have the database that is uh, unprejudiced. But we see that uh, basically people, for example, who uh, have uh, children Russian citizens, but they they are uh, they are expelled and they cannot enter the country and then their minors are here without parents it's crazy uh, this like for example uh, one woman is uh, a foreign citizen and another uh, and her husband is for example a, a Russian citizen and she is expelled from the country so the family is ruined and so this is another problem that uh, directly affects uh, this uh, migration flow for, for from if I'm not mistaken roughly. Uh, from uh, the beginning of 2012, uh, or probably the middle of 2011, uh, more than one million foreign, uh, for, uh, foreigners uh, were included into this list. What can we offer? We are uh, uh, we're consulting, we are giving uh, social consultations. Uh, legal consultations, and uh, we are also distributing some charity for specific uh, very vulnerable groups. We have our store of second-hand clothes and shoes. Uh, we have uh, um, separate uh, funds for, uh, for example, medical uh, problems, for medical um, uh, exa examination or immediate help. Because foreigners have to pay for their um, medical uh, tests here, and uh, when they are in crucial situation, they have no funds. They are uh, not admitted to hospitals. Then we can help in in in, uh, uh, in such situations. Um, and uh, yes, we also provide services uh, um, of uh, representing victims uh, in courts. We have a number of lawyers working with us, with us and attorneys, uh, uh, who are taking like strategic uh, cases. So this strategic litigation, especially about slavery cases, uh, hate crimes cases, and um, um, yeah, and deportation cases as well, are in our focus. Uh, frankly speaking, the situation in civil society in general in Russia is very um, uh, stressful uh, because uh, there are different laws against uh, NGOs and against uh, um, separate civil activists, maybe you've heard about it. And uh, oh, it is rather stressful, not only because uh, we 
quite seldom, quite rarely can really help a person because uh, as an NGO we don't have that much possibilities in Russia uh, to help. So that uh, it is one one thing, and the second thing is that um, uh, the uh, well, the situation is uh, in these fears, in, uh, in in violence, in hate crimes, in asylum uh, system is uh, quite, uh, well, so it's not developing, it's becoming more and more rusty. And uh, it's very difficult to find, uh, for me even, to find some source of inspiration to work. <laughs>